Let's take a look at how to build a linear equation. Um, that means that if you were to graph this equation, it would make a straight line. Also, it would mean that the exponent for the x value or the input value or independent variable, if you would, is to the first degree. So you really don't have to worry about this idea of exponents. Let's look at a really simple situation. It's, it's where the problem is almost begging you to follow it. Howard brought a car for $4,000. His monthly payment is 400 a month. Write an equation where y is the amount uh, Howard still owes on his car, and x is going to be the number of months he has made payments. So let's, let's stop and, and think about this one a little bit. This is where people usually get in trouble. They jump in and start writing numbers down without really understanding what's happening. So first off, um, the first thing we know is that Howard bought a car. And I'm going to put 4000 here just so we know how much he, he paid. We also know um, he's paying, I'm going to put 400 a month there so we know that. And, and so uh, as he borrowed $4,000 from somewhere, and it's not talking about interest or anything, so it's a, a very simple uh, arrangement, maybe he borrowed it from family. He bought a car for $4,000 a month. Um, he's going to pay $400 a month. How is this $400 payment going to affect this $4,000 uh, amount that he borrowed to buy the car? It's going to reduce it. So um, Every single month, it's going to go down by an extra $400. And then over here would be the amount that he still is owed. Okay, so let's go see if we can plug this in to make sense of it now. Here's the 4000 that he spent originally. And now we're going to subtract the monthly payment. Okay, that's $400. $400 for one month would mean that we got it down to three thousand six hundred dollars however that's like one scenario we want to know what's going to happen all the, the different months here so if it was uh, after two months well that would be eight hundred dollars four thousand minus eight hundred is thirty two hundred dollars so how about we do this let's just look at what's going to happen here x should be the number of months okay so 400 times however many months that he would be making this payment, and y is going to be the amount owed. And we could rewrite it. We could say y equals 4,000 minus 400 per month. And notice that's how I'm reading it. The amount he owes is $4,000 minus uh, $400 times the number of payments he makes. So that's one way to do it. Um, Another way that you could rearrange it is say y equals, put our, our slope first, which would be negative 400, x, and then that's a positive 4,000, so we would say plus, I'm going to write 4,000 down here off to the side. There we go, so y equals negative 400, x plus 4,000. This equation would work right here, so does this. so does this. They mean the exact same thing. Let's look at another situation. Okay, so Charlie won 68 suckers playing bingo at some county fair. Um, he gets back to school, and he's going to give five suckers to each of his friends. He's got 48 suckers left over after he does this. How many friends does Charlie have? So uh, basically, X is, is what we need to figure out. X is the number of friends that Charlie has. Now let's let's take a look at what's happening here. First off, he won 68 suckers. Okay. Then he gives five to each friend. Okay. And then I'm just going to put has 48 because he has 48 suckers left over. So let's stop and think about it. He had 68 suckers. Imagine that you're Charlie. You've got all this candy. Then you start giving it away. So what's going to happen? It's going to cause it to re to be reduced, to go down. So that 68 is going to go down. So we're going to subtract the number of suckers that he gave away. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly uh, how many suckers that he has left there. So let's, let's do this. 68 minus... I do know after he's done giving it away, 
he'll have the 48 suckers left over. So 68 minus something equals 48. Instantly, we should all know, hey, that's 20. But we're trying to do a little bit of a, a higher level thing here in case we ever have to do this same idea with, with harder numbers that we can't see that relation. Um, he's got five suckers going to each friend. So if he had zero friends, zero times five would be zero. He wouldn't give away anything. If he had uh, two friends only, 5 times 2 is 10, 68 minus 10 would be 58. So, um, you know, it's, it's not correct in this situation, but it, it just helps us set up for how to build these equations. Basically, it's 5 times the number of friends that he has, and we're trying to figure out how many friends does he have. Since we're given specifically that he's got 48 uh, suckers left over, this is what I would want you to be able to construct, something close to this. Um, if you wanted to figure it out, hey, minus 68 from both sides. And we get negative 5x equals negative 20. Divide both sides by negative 5. And suddenly you'd be able to find out that, yeah, he, he's got um, four friends uh, that he had at school that he was splitting up all of the, the suckers with. Um, that's a, a nice specific way to be able to show mathematically to prove how that is. However, um, if we change the story problem a little bit and we said, hey, look, when Daniel gets to school, he's going to give five suckers out to every single person um, that he meets. In other words, let's cross out this idea that he's got 48 left. Well, it'd be 68 minus five suckers to every person, and X would instead of being person uh, friends would be number of people he runs into and then what would be left over would be well it would just depend on how many people he had left over so if you looked at it more as a function x would be your input and y would be your output and um, we can always flip the equation around and say y equals negative 5x plus 68 and that's the standard slope intercept form of the equation This situation is a little different. Instead of it decreasing, it's going to be an amount increasing. Uh, Rita's setting up for a car. She's got $500 saved. She's going to put in an extra $150 on top of that every single month. And the question is, is how many months until she saved uh, $5,000? So X should be equal the number of months um, that she's saving. And so let's take a look at this. Um, Here's the amount she already has, which would be $5,000, and she's going to add that into uh, the new savings that she's going to add onto it, and it's going to equal, those two amounts are going to combine, that's the reason we're saying it's adding, it's going to equal $5,000, because that's her goal, okay? So how much does she already have? She had 500 already. And she was going to put in $150 every single month. So like 150 times 1 uh, would be 150, or 150 times 2 would be 300. So it's this idea of multiplying the um, rate of change um, by the, the number of time units. In this case, it's number of months. So 150 times the number of months combined with the 500 she already has saved equals $5,000. There's your equation. Um, you know, subtract 500 from both sides. We get 150x equals 4,500. Divide each side by 150, and then you see that well, gee, it would take her 30 months because x equals 30 and x is number of months. So it would take her 30 months to save up to be $5,000. Every problem's a little bit different. Sometimes you'll just get a, a riddle. Uh, for a story problem, and you'll need to come up with an equation to solve it. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's not as difficult, but it does take practice. So let's take a look at this. A wise man said, 400 reduced by 4 times my age is 40. How old is his age? This particular type of problem is literally trying to show you uh, what you can do to, to make it happen. So let's look, read it slowly. 400, so let's write down 400 reduced by, that's just talking about subtraction, reduced by 
what, four, so let's write down four times, that means multiplication, four times my age. But we don't know how old the age is, so we just put in a variable. So let's go back and review 400 reduced by four times my age. So 400 minus four times x. We'll let x be the age. And then it says is, which just is another code word for equal, 40. So there's your equation, 400 minus 4x equals 40. And then you handle it just like you would any other two-step of equation. Please don't panic that you see negatives on, on both sides because it'll all work out here. And we see that this wise man is actually 90 years old. So the, the main idea is if you see a, a riddle problem, a lot of times it will actually give you the hints of how to build the equation. If we look back through at uh, Rita saving up for a car, it, if you would just track what's happening in the problem and you can see how the circumstances relate to each other, you can figure out should you add or subtract, multiply or divide. And there's different ways you can set that up as long as it, it holds true to the situation. Um, the same thing for when Charlie won the, the suckers and passed them out to the friends or when, when Howard bought a car. Um, just put yourself in that person's situation and, and start making a little mental model of, of how you see, saw that I wrote that out of, of Howard bought the car for 4000 you see how the, the monthly payment's going to reduce that amount and, and then the, the new amount is how much he still owes. If you can kind of make a mental storyboard, that can help you out immensely when you're trying to build these equations.